it's Thursday. So there's a question that I've been thinking about for a really long time now. As the title of the video says, can you crochet a sewing pattern? I've always kind of arrived at the same point, which is that it's probably more efficient to make the shapes as three-dimensional to start with, rather than making the two-dimensional fabric panels that sewing patterns use to assemble their shapes. However, I've always just had this feeling that I'm really going to like the aesthetic, and so today we're going to test that out and just see if it is actually possible. Mostly because I adore the patterns put out by Choli Knight on Sew Des Nair, and this finally gives me an excuse to make one. This isn't sponsored, I'm just a fan. I've linked her website in the description down below where she has a bunch of free patterns and they're all really, really pretty and you can all check them out as well. So for today, I have selected this T-Rex baby and step one is to print the pattern. Uh, now I'm only printing out the piece guide to save on paper, but the whole document is honestly so pretty and well laid out. Okay, so I have my two pages here, all of their shapes marked out now. I've only really kind of thought about my approach from this point forwards. I haven't really tried anything yet, so I'm kind of just going to feel our way together. So the first thing that I notice on these pieces of paper is that there has been like a seam allowance left, which we're not going to need with crochet. So I'm going to have to be making my shapes within the like the dotted lines. But yeah, otherwise I'm seeing a lot of like small kind of fiddly pieces, but that's to be expected. Depending on the outcome here, I'm getting ahead of myself, but I wouldn't mind trying this again with like a wearable pattern, maybe for a cardigan or something that has like larger panels. So uh, leave me a comment if you'd be interested in seeing that, but maybe wait till the end of the video until we see if this is even gonna work. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna work each of these pieces up as like a flat panel and I've picked some colors here. Um, I picked some dinosaurian colors. I did, I did consider making them the same color as I can't remember if I named you peaches. I thought about making them kind of similar colors. This main color is not available anymore, but I thought about making similar colors, but maybe, but uh, I, I kind of really want to do something a little blue green today. I'm feeling blue green today, not orange. Sorry, mate. Be back on the shelf there. Rawr. So I think I'm going to start with this like big headpiece. Now, because it's got this split in it, it's going to be easiest to work these rows horizontally this way. So that when it comes time to do that split, I can literally just like chain out again to extend the row. So that's that's the direction I'm going to take. So sideways up the head. And I'm going to have to really pay attention to sort of the direction I put the rows on all of the pieces so that they kind of line up nicely. So we're going to start this head and I'm going to start by working sort of along this bottom part of the jaw. Okay, so I've got my green on my hook here. It's not the most inspired color palette, but we do what we do. Scoot it onto camera and I want to chain the longest part of this jaw. I almost kind of want a ruler in here to help me like eliminate it, but I think drawing all over the pretty pattern. I think that's row one. So we'll just chain across and see how we go. So that's 10 chains, which looks to be the right width. So then I'm going to chain an additional one for my turning chain and work back. And I'm also going to try a technique that I found out about in the comment section of my last video. I was having a little rant, if I'm honest, about short rows and how much I dislike them. <laughs> and somebody was mentioning using a gusset to, to avoid that and it just reminded me that when I was working on my Pokemon videos last, I had to make one that had a lot of flat panels in it and I was doing alternating rows of slip stitch and single crochet to like avoid the like upside down stitch aesthetic which I hate and so we're going to try a little bit of gusset work today or we're going to try a little bit of that slip stitch technique today to get all of our stitches going in the same direction so we'll see how that turns out okay so far so good so next I want to really expand out on either side so I'll put increases in the two end ones and that might this one here might even end up being an increase three so we need very dramatic progression but we'll see how, how that bends. The initial attempt was not without its hassles. It makes a lot more sense to experiment with techniques on small, simple shapes, but I, for some reason, decided that the head was the logical starting point. So that's a gusset. At least that's my understanding of one. And then I can just go back to the start of my row and keep working the same way around. Watching it back, I swear it was like I'd forgotten how to make flat shapes. So 
So I keep losing the starting stitch to my row, so I'm just gonna use a little bit of scrap yarn to help mark it for me. Don't need the complication of tracking it down every single row. This will speed this up. Never test new techniques with massive pieces. I know this already. If I was going to experiment with gussets, I should have done it with the arm piece, not the head piece. Okay, cool. I just needed to let that out of my system. <laughs> Despite my efforts, it was doomed and I frogged back to nothing. Um, so I frogged it in a, in a minor fit of peak, but I'm gonna do it my way this time because my way's better and it involves using slip stitches to get back to the start of the row. And it makes for a slightly stiffer fabric, but I think that's fine for something like what we're doing today. And also it won't have all of those like strands flying everywhere, tangling with everything. I just wasn't for me, wasn't for me. Uh, I could have worked over the top of it as well, but again, that was just adding, it was just, I didn't like it. I'm gonna do it my way instead <laughs> and we're just gonna, we're gonna start again. Cause it's gonna be one of those things where like, I struggle and I struggle and I struggle to work out how to do it. And then I'll work it out and then I'll just, suddenly all of the pieces will be here. Yeah, that's, that's the, I believe. Do you believe? So after a couple of struggles with the head, I did decide to take my own advice and go back and start with the arms. And I immediately started finding more success using my own slip stitch method. And just keeping in mind that the curve would come when I sewed the pieces together. So they were allowed to look a little bit jagged at this point. So yeah, there's one of the little arms and it says here that I need four. One more. There we go me acting like I've accomplished something when all I've made is four tiny arm pieces of the many many pieces needed here but there are our four tiny arms which are this piece here lay them all up and now I'm so much more familiar with the technique um, that I'm going to be using to make the rest of these pieces I'm feeling a lot better equipped to handle for example this back piece or this head piece and there's another page of these somewhere that I've I'm stuck somewhere, but I'm sure I'll, I'll find it when I need it. There's a whole other page of pieces here. So I'm feeling a lot better equipped to handle this now. So that's, that's a good thing. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to have another, tr another try at making the head. All right, so I'm going to try the head again, but this time I'm going to try approaching it from the top of the head and working down. Just sometimes trickier shapes are easier when approached from a distance. <laughs> nom 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 So there's the, the bottom jaw and it looks like the fabric is different from one side to the other. So I'll just have to whip up another one the other way and hope that they are close enough. That looks pretty good. When it's sewn, I think it'll be even closer. So that's, that's good. So we're probably going to come back when I've got all the pieces in front of me because that I think is when the real fun will start. Okay, so with the arms made and the heads made and the backs made, I just needed to make 
two of the head gusset, one piece for the belly, four copies of the leg, two facing one way, two facing the other, a bunch of little face details, and then finally the teeth. Okay, so I know that these teeth are pretty rough. What you have to understand is that it's nine hours later. So this, we're gonna make it work, okay? It even says to make two, and we're just gonna make one work because I need to start assembling this guy or I'm gonna lose my mind. And also, if this doesn't come out the cutest thing ever, I'm also gonna lose my mind. And I thought that, you know what? That makes for kind of a good video. So the cameras are back on and I'm here losing my mind. So <laughs> with all of these pieces, none of which look kind of familiar to me at all because like, how does that become anything? I'm worried that they're too rough to become the thing that they are supposed to become. So I like steadily over the course of the afternoon, I've plucked out all of my feathers. We're very stressed, but we're going to give assembly a go now. So I'm referring back to the document and we're going to start trying to stick these pieces together. Okay. So step one, moving all of this off to one side seems to be assembling the face. So I'll take all these little face details and I'll take the two head pieces. So that involves putting on the eyes. So approximately there, as well as, oh, we need some pins for this. Let's pin this together. Tuck that under. That's one eye. And this is funny because like, I'm so used to putting the face on after there's a head. <laughs> Whereas for this, you, you put the face on first. The little cheek goes just under the eye, which is actually a really cute little position. We like that. We have a second, a little cheeky for this side. We have a little catch light. Now this is coming out a lot chunkier than I think the embroidery would, but it is the nature of the material and that's kind of what we're checking today is like, does this actually work? That, and then we also have two little nostrils which go on the nose. So far, I think we're nailing this. And about there. Okay, so I'm going to take my two pieces and I'm going to sew the little bits onto them now. I've really only got my my big yarn needles and my big yarn to do this with, so just hoping we can make that work. I think I might sew the pieces to the green with green, and then I'll use either some black or some white for the catch light. So far, so good. The face has been attached to both pieces. Hello. I'm feeling strong. We are grabbing our two head pieces, meaning these long strippy bits. So I've got two of them here. They also have a right and a wrong side. Frankly, it's a little hard to tell which is which. Okay, those two sides look like they match, right? Yeah, I think I'm right there. They, they look like they match. Just put them so that their nice sides are facing together. So I'm going to put a whole bunch of this contrast yarn, which is the yarn I'm going to be using to sew this together onto my needle here. Some of you get so angry when I put so, when I put like a long strand of yarn on my needle, but it's just like, I would rather untangle my yarn 15 times than thread my needle twice. And I will die on that hill. And we are just going to sew these two ends together. So that's, that's not too hard. Maybe I should have allowed for that seam allowance as well. <laughs> I'm getting a little bit nervous now that these pieces actually have to be joined together because we're joining them using like very classic kind of sewing methods, which I haven't allowed for any shrinkage because I was just like, oh, they're crochet pieces. We'll just sew them end to end and it'll be fine. It's like, it may not be fine. So it's a, like that. And then it should be able to flip out. Okay. That's not bad. That's not bad. All right, cool. We're doing great. Feeling very mad scientist for some reason. <laughs> You'd think I would have grown like desensitized to assembling things from yarn by now, but I haven't. <laughs> Admittedly, it's somewhat wonkier than the one shown in the pattern, but we are going to make it work. So what, what are we doing here? Okay. So there were notches that I disregarded, but 
Well, one long end of the gusset to wrap around the head. The seam of the gusset. Notch on the head side. Okay, okay, okay. So that would have been there. This is meant to be right side in still. Okay. So that would be there-ish. That would be... Okay, yeah. This is, this is working. It's working, guys. Okay, so we'll pin this. And I'm going to have to assemble right side out. I'm just going to have to. It's just the nature of this. And it's... The limits of my skills <laughs> and this is meant to go all the way to the tippy of his little mouth just i think we got an extra flap along with the top of the head there that will just tuck inside and no one will know it's as many pins as i need to feel comfortable which is a higher than average amount well the level of discomfort right now is high and this is meant to wrap all the way around the underside up to that point so we've got to make sure that we've left enough room all the way around to the other side that's why i want to like pin the whole thing first so then i can like shuffle bits a little bit because i think that some of my pieces they weren't sadly produced to the highest degree of accuracy with the written pattern the way it would have been if we had just like cut out fabric pieces and so like some small adjustments i knew would have to be made at this point of the process but honestly so far so like i said so far so good my hope for producing something is increasing. I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about this right now. I would like to have it be known though, if I'd just gone straight for creating crochet 3D shapes, I would have been done about six hours ago. <laughs> like so. And then I believe I just have to sew from like this end all the way around. So we'll do that now. And we'll just start here at the tip of the nose. I hate it when I do that. Ah. Wah -ha. Rah, 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 rah. Okay, so that's the first chunk of the head done. And then it looks like the next thing we do is put the other half of the face on, which I guess makes sense. But I feel like it's going to be a much harder task. Let's see if we can't pull this off. Line up the tip of the little mouth again like we did last time and the other little tip of the mouth and we'll just bend it around okay now i gotta sew the other half of the the, the head on so we'll we'll do that <laughs> Okay, with our little head nugget assembled, I'm actually really pleased with how it's turning out so far. The next challenge is the teeth. It has this whole spiel about lining the layers of the teeth up and sewing over them, and it's like, that's not gonna happen. We have one piece. This is what we're working with. This silly little bit with some picots thrown in. It says, like, focus on the opening. So, like, I guess this is the opening. Worst case scenario, I'm just gonna sew the mouth shut. <laughs> And we're going to take out teeth. Oh, I see, I see. This is, this is hard. So we'll line up those two teeth. And this is meant to be in there. Uh, if I'd made a double layer panel, I think I'd be having the same problem because I don't follow instructions well. So we're going to, we're going to flip around the instructions and, and just sort of work it out. What I ended up doing was something kind of counterintuitive. I pinned the teeth to the top jaw so that they stuck straight up the face. I then sewed along the edge with green so that the white didn't show through to the face. Then I could just flip them over and use white yarn to sew the bottom side of the jaw to the back of the teeth, closing off the mouth and hiding all the seams. Here's my stuffing. I found the stuffing. Gotta feed your T-Rex. Okay, folks, I'm going to need you to be nice about this. <laughs> look how dumb the teeth look. I think they could be worse. I think that he's relatively symmetrical for what he is, which I'm, which I'm, I'm doing okay about. He's a little cr more crooked from underneath, but he's going to see him from underneath and we'll have a body in the way, so we're going fine. That's where we're at so far. So I assume at this point we move on to assembling the body. Because currently he's got 
no body to love. So it looks like the first thing we're going to do is take our belly and sew that dart shut. So we'll pin that shut so we remember to do it. Looks like we are then going to be doing the arm pieces, which I have here. And it looks like we sew them three of the four sides. So we sew around the outside, which is fine. We can do that. I can manage that. I think that's right. And that's right. Okay. All of this is, of course, happening under the watchful eyes of the disapproving chicken. Oh, and then it looks like we can do the legs in this step as well. So I have two left and two right here. And they will also be sewn together around three sides. That. So I have a bunch of little assembly tasks to do. And then I think we join these pieces onto the belly piece. Okay, so that's that done. Now limbs. So we just pin these to the belly a little bit like this. Well, hopefully exactly like this. I may have overstuffed the legs a little bit, but I think that they work. Oh my goodness, guys, look. Ah, hello. And then it's just a matter of like sewing. Head done, front of body done. And you will not convince me that whatever it is we do with these two pieces isn't witchcraft. Okay, so I have them nice side facing outwards. I, I'll leave this camera on so you can just in case something fun happens. And I believe we sew this dart shut. So I'll like do a little pin. There's one. And the other one's not nearly as clean, but that's kind of what happens when you have to do like one one way and one the other. Well, all right, we'll start. Let's start there. has given me a whole new appreciation for how you take something flat and make three dimensional shapes out of it because I'm just so used to working in like slices and layers now, which is a lot closer to just like 3D printing. Whereas like this is taking something that isn't meant to be three dimensional and like forcing it to be. There's something really cool about that. <laughs> okay, so that's one dart sewn shut. Oh, the panic is setting in. It's 11 o'clock at night now. It wasn't 11 o'clock at night when I started this project, but I'm determined to finish it today. It's like we've come so far and I'm so close. Like, I mean, we're sewing together. That can't possibly take more than, knocking on wood, more than the next hour. Okay, so that's those two darts sewn shut. So we have these pieces. There we go. Okay, <laughs> I confused myself for a second there, but no, we've got our two pieces. Okay, and now we layer them on top of one another. Okay, I think this is the tail, and I think this is where the neck goes at the top here. So, okay, my stitches are running in a slightly different direction than I thought, but I, th I think we're going to be okay. I think we're going to survive this. And I'm supposed to sew all the way up and around the back of this tail up to here. I can manage that. I think my verdict on this is either crochet something or just cut something out of felt and sew it. <laughs> but we're not done yet. And I do think he is going to be a charming little fellow, but I think that that speaks more to the pattern that I'm using than the, the technique that I'm using. We'll see. Okay, we got a waggy little tail. <laughs> Okay, so now I believe this is meant to fit over this. Okay, yeah, I see. I see what's happening. And then there's meant to be like a little opening at the neck. I think, I think we can do this. There's like a point here. There's like a point there, though I may have missed the point. Um, everything's just going to be slightly crooked because I didn't notch it. I will say that the pattern gives excellent instructions as to notches and whatnot. I've just chosen to ignore them at every turn, and that is not the pattern's fault. And it's not like with sewing, so like I can tuck all of these scraggly ends in after it's sewn. I don't have to worry about it like being neat at the time of sewing. 
once I can those pieces fit together. So now I take my trusty stabbing implement and stab them till they stay together. to inflate him. Okay. Oh, witchcraft accomplished. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Oh no! Okay, and then I think the head just goes like onto the neck. Anyway, I think you guys have probably seen enough sewing to last you for at least until next week. So let's cut to the final reveal. Okay, so there is our finished dinosaur. Now for anybody wondering if I'm going to put the pattern out for this, the answer is no. Because even though I drafted the crochet pattern for this, the design is absolutely not mine. You should visit Choli Knight's site. Again, the link is in the description. You should check out all of her patterns. It's like I have no claim to any of this. <laughs> However, I think in answering the question of can you crochet a sewing pattern, the answer is yes. But it does lead us to another question and that is, do you have any other option? <laughs> Because when I think of Crochet Dinosaur, I want it to be like this. This looks like the toy that Peach is here hugs to go to sleep at night. Oh, never mind, I fell in love with it. I don't know, I'll leave it to you guys. Should you crochet sewing patterns? <laughs> but other than that, I'll see you next week. Okay, bye! <laughs>